Today we're continuing with the third in the series on the background uh, worker. And uh, this one we solved the problem of uh, how to access form controls from a background worker do work event handler. And the reason you normally can't do that is a background worker do work is running in a different thread than the uh, uh, main thread which owns the handle to the uh, window form and the window forms controls. In order to make this test look like the the program that I'm trying to integrate the code into, I, it's a little convoluted. It might seem unnecessarily convoluted, but that's because I'm trying to make the subproblem test program fit the conditions of the over program to use the terms from my beginners course. So I initially have a form that launches another form and if we double click on the launch BGW form button you see I essentially have a background uh, FRM background which is the second form and then I have a local variable M underscore which is a convention for a member variable uh, FRM background and in the form load event I instantiate this uh, form so the forms created but it's not visible at this point at the form load point of the first form and then when you press the uh, button to launch the uh, form it does uh, uses the member variable which now has an instance of the uh, second form and does a show dialog method on it which causes it to pop up and then if we look at the uh, second form whoops didn't mean to do that I caused the second form to go away so to get it back <laughs> I'm gonna double click on form here and here it is again and uh, that was in the Solution Explorer, if you ever do that by accident. I opened this in a second window and then closed the window. But as you can see, this is the form that has the background worker in it. And uh, if you look at the background worker properties, and it's specifically the events, all three events are, um, are accessed. And the progress changed which runs on the same thread as the uh, main thread so you can access controls with it would just receive a uh, integer from the progress changed event args uh, progress percentage that field of that parameter and that's just passed to it via the report progress and the do work and the conventional process but the trouble with this is it is just an integer so you can show a progress bar moving or you can show a number changing in a text box but you can't do much else with it so you wanted to have uh, the do work directly access other controls so we can show other information like the size of file the number of files that need to get copied the number of files that have been copied and all kinds of other processing so in order to test this idea, I created my own report progress function called report progress text box. And I'm sending it the same uh, value, the IX, which shows the progress, the simulated progress through the number of tasks. And this is the interesting part. This is the trick, really, the report progress text box. It uses something called a, a callback. And a callback in C sharp is uh, very similar to a postback in PHP. And a postback, you check whether there's parameters on the uh, URL that called you, CGI parameters, which CGI stands for uh, Common Gateway Interface, unless you're going to Cambridge College, and then it stands for Cambridge gateway interface. But both the postback and the uh, callback in uh, PHP and C-sharp respectively effectively call themselves twice. 
First they uh, do an if that checks a condition. In the case of the post back, it checks whether there's any parameters passed in the URL in PHP. And in the case of the callback, it checks a property of the text box involved. The text box involved here is txt progress. And the property is uh, invoke required. And this is a Boolean that if you needed to invoke, because you're basically the reason you need an invoke is because you're running on a different thread and you can't directly access this form variable, the, the guy that called this function. So if the invoke is required, uh, well, I should say if the invoke's not required, I just directly set the text box to this value and then I do an update of the text box. And this code actually is used whether it's required or not because in the second part I say if it is required instantiate a delegate called a D which is of the type uh, set text callback and the real uh, function that is uh, set into this delegate list is report progress text box which is the same as ourselves Offensively, this is a form of recursion, yet another form of recursion, where we're saying create a delegate that calls ourselves and then call it with the uh, form uh, method invoke. And invoke lets you essentially go across threads. So it says invoke this delegate. And the, you can pass uh, parameters to a delegate that are of type uh, array of objects. So you create a new array of objects and pass the ix that came in as a parameter. So when you do the invoke, what happens is this routine gets called again. But this time, because it's being called with an invoke, invoke is no longer required. So now we execute this code directly and set the ix into the text box and do the update. And probably the best way to see this is to set a couple breakpoints. So if I set a breakpoint here and set another breakpoint here, you're going to see this kind of tick-tock effect of the, the function being called and then calling itself again. So first you execute this and then you execute that. So let's uh, save and uh, compile and run this program. You press uh, launch the form and now we get the actual form. This is the text box we've been talking about. And when I say start background worker, you see we've, we've gone to the do work which uh, essentially called a report text box and is sleeping for a second in order to simulate some background process running. And initially the uh, text box invoke required is set to true because we do need an invoke. We're trying to access a control across threads. So here we allocate this delegate. And if you look at the delegate itself, the way it's defined, essentially this just shows the function signature, delegate void set text callback int ix which says all the uh, delegates that get it set into this delegate list because a delegate is really a list of functions will have the format avoid return value and an int uh, parameter and you can see report progress text box fits this uh, function signature has a void return value and an int text box so now we're stopped at the point where we said an invoke is required, so establish this delegate, invoke or uh, instantiate this delegate, and give it the real function of report progress text box. So we have delegate D, and then we have this dot invoke, which invoke is inherited from the, the main Windows form that comes with the, uh, the IDE. You know, it's not something we wrote ourselves. So invoke this delegate and then pass as a parameter the ix using a new array of objects allocation 
in the second field. So if we continue running, what happens is we now stop in this area of the uh, if statement because now invoke isn't required because we're being we're calling ourselves with an invoke. So now we can actually set a value into that text box and do an update. So if we continue running, you notice the zero is now in the uh, the text box, and we'll continue this tech tick tock motion for the rest of the program. It, it, we we run. We'll stop on the uh, allocate the delegate, and then when we run again, we'll stop on the actually set the field because we now don't require an invoke because we're being called from an invoke. We're calling ourselves twice in effect every time. So if I stop this and get rid of these breakpoints, and now if we just run the program, whoops, uh, minimize this baby. Okay, run the program, launch the form, launch the background worker, and the do work is now calling the report text box, which is able to allocate it because it's using the invoke with a delegate. So we've solved the problem of, uh, of how to access Windows Forms uh, fields or, or, or controls via the do work of the the background uh, worker, and of course the done and the uh, the background task is completed are set in the uh, run worker completed, which runs in the main thread, so it always has access to the uh, the form controls, as would the uh, progress changed if we used that, but we're trying to get away from using that. As you can see, I have it commented out in the code, and I'm substituting our homegrown version. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.